portrait gallery, the last exhibit that you're going to see on the second floor, and there's portraits of Mashantucket Pequot people. And uh, they walk in and they're like, they're not Indian, they're black. I think also because I sometimes had a rather difficult upbringing as a child because I did feel in between, uh, I guess is the best way to put it. When I was first going to school, I went to a private Lutheran school and I was the only child of color in the entire school. And I had wonderful experiences with my teacher, but not such great experiences with the students around me. When we went, to, uh, moved to another neighborhood and I went into a public school, it was primarily a black school. And I was thrilled. I thought when I saw more children that had chocolate skin that I'd be able to join in and I'd be more of a part of a group. And that wasn't the case at all. It was quite a shocking and disappointing experience for me to realize that they too thought I was not like them. Uh I was in Narragansett when to be an Indian really was uh, unheard of because when I was in school, uh, we were taught Eastern Indian uh, history as if it was like uh, learning about the ancient Trojans. When I was in the fourth grade, I got uh, sent out of class because one of the questions was, when did Columbus discover America? and I crossed out discover and put invaded. Invaded indeed. After Columbus, Europeans took over Indian lands, wiping out millions of native peoples with military aggression and devastating diseases, such as smallpox, to which the Indians were not immune. Soon enslaved Africans were brought to North America and put to work on land that had once belonged to native peoples. Patuxet was one of 60 or more bands that we had in the Wampanoag Nation. The people were uh, wiped out in plagues between 1616 and 1618, which is even before the pilgrims came. It was of European origin, brought here by um, fishermen and explorers um, before the pilgrims came. It's quite clear that um, from the first arrival, from the first time that Africans set foot in the Americas, they were intermingling with Native Americans. And the interaction continued, obviously, all the way through Indian removal, and even thereafter, those Indians who stayed in the Southeast were mingling with African Americans. Well, in the colonial period, one of the um, very curious things that was happening was a whole new kind of human being created who was of African, Indian, and European ancestry. And in fact, in the colonies, both um, in North America and the Caribbean, there were all kinds of mixtures of whites and Indians, whites and Africans, Africans and Indians, and new kinds of human beings created. And I think that it's reasonable to say that many British residents of North America were not comfortable with these people of brown people, yellow people, all different kinds of mixes of people they were encountering. So you had um, native slaves, native indentured servants, and African slaves and indentured servants working side by side um, in various kinds of domestic situations and also on uh, large plantations in the southern part of New England. I'm talking about New England here. One of the things you got was actual uh, intermarriage of some blacks and some Indians. 